Hey there, and welcome back. Today, I think it's time to get back on the vintage off-road wrecker. If you didn't see my previous video with the wrecker, currently the clutch is broken. The truck still moves under its own power, but the clutch does not work correctly. So I will need to pull the transmission out to get to that clutch, but there are a few other things that I want to upgrade before I get to that. First, let's take a look around the wrecker. I have not given a close-up view of some of the changes that have been made recently. Up here in the front, there are not any changes since I installed the front winch. I had installed these lockout hubs in a previous video. One thing up here that has changed that I haven't talked about, but I do have power brakes now. So this little reservoir right here, that is now the brake reservoir. And if we look under the truck, you can see the brake booster and a new master cylinder. Everything that had to come off during the installation, I did get that powder coated red. If we continue back from the master cylinder a little bit, there is a vacuum reservoir installed right there. I don't necessarily like the way that the master cylinder hangs down. It does hang down more than the original, but it has that little skid plate and it should be out of the way for the most part. I also had added a line lock. So this little button here next to the clutch pedal that it activates the line lock, and that will let me use the hydraulic brakes as another parking brake, which is helpful, especially for a tow truck. Around here on the back, I did add a drag winch, and that winch is just as powerful as the one up front. And the pencil hitch had to be moved off to the side. I did buy another one off of eBay right there that I will mount over on the other side. That way, if I'm pulling something with the truck, I could actually use a bridle between the two pencil hitches. And these are all modifications that were done before I took it out the last time and broke it. So it does have some recoveries under its belt with the new winch back here. Let me show you some of the things that I'm planning. Here is the new clutch upgrade kit. So this is a brand new clutch, have new pilot bearing and a new throw out bearing as well. Then I do have hardened axles for the rear of the truck. This here is a new bolt kit for the intake and exhaust manifold, which will be coming off because I will be doing a better exhaust system, but that's not here right now. So we'll just ignore those for now. I do have a high performance cam for this engine that will be going in eventually, but I'm going to start my performance upgrades with a new two barrel Weber carburetor. And this is actually a kit that they make for AMC and Dodge engines. It comes with this adapter that will adapt the two barrel of this carburetor to the single barrel intake manifold. And then that allows you to clock it any way that you want to. Will be a manual choke, just like the setup is on it right now, although it's non-standard. Currently, this truck actually has a Rochester carb from a 1950s Chevrolet. So at some point, this M37 was outfitted with that. Originally, this would have been a single barrel carter with a governor. And to fit this one, they have also removed the governor, which would have sat beneath the carburetor right on the top of the intake manifold. And then I also have these new caps that will be going onto the new hardened axles. Unfortunately, these have a very fine spline. They are not the coarse spline that you have on the inside of the axle. I would have preferred that this was here like this on both sides of this, that we didn't have a coarse and a fine spline. That way I would be able to use lockouts on the rear of the truck as well. But if these are strong enough that I can't break them, I guess it's not that big of a deal. So I think I'm going to start by putting the hardened axles in. Before I install the axle, I need to put the cap on it. So I need to open that up. And inside here, I'm going to find a snap ring. And I need to fit that to the end of the axle and that's going to hold the cap to it. So I need to slide the cap on first and it is precision machined, so will go really smooth once you get it started, but finding that first starting point can be a little hard. There might be a special tool to use with this, but I'm going to split this ring open and then just kind of slide it on a little bit at a time, working my way around. I rotate it a little to make sure it falls into the groove. That part's done. Now you can see the cap cannot fall off. Now I can put the cover back on. And there is an O-ring here. So I need to make sure that that stays in place. 
Replacing the axle is really easy. I just need to undo these nuts. Then I can use these bolts to help pull that axle out, slide it out, and slide the new one in. Now I'm going to use a square drive socket on these square bolts. You can see that pushes the axle out. Now you just slide the new one in. I'll need to rotate it to see if I can get the gears to match up. There we go. Now just fasten it back down. Now I can just clean this up and we're all done. Let's take a little break from installing things to work on something that I've been trying to work out for a long time. So after the record games to make this truck legal to take to other off-road parks, I built this headache rack similar to what my rollback tow truck has. And then recently I added this tube that goes across here and then I've mounted a small winch to it. And that's because these chains hold the hoist up. And to raise and lower the boom, I have to basically jam this winch so that this cable can pull it up. And then I can readjust the chains. I want to use this small winch to raise and lower the boom. I've already attached a snatch block with a chain up to there, getting ready for this. So I think let's pull the cable out and see if this is going to work like I think it is. And then we can temporarily wire it up and see if it works. Okay, what I've done here, the winch line runs up there around that pulley and then back over here and is pinned up at the top of this. Now remember, this is a 5,000 pound winch and since I am doubling up the distance, that means it has a 10,000 pound capacity and it will move half as fast. Now the movement is actually good because I do not want the boom to move very quickly. And if I needed even more power, I could put another pulley back here and then anchor this up to the top of that. But let's start with this and see how it works. I'm going to temporarily connect the cables from my control box so that we can test this. I have the control box temporarily wired up. It's connected to a switch. And I'm going to take the battery cables and connect them up to a jump pack. The battery is connected. Let's try this out. It does move pretty quickly, easily pulls that up. Maybe I should undo these chains and see how it does without them. I have the chains removed now, so the only thing holding the boom up is the winch. Actually not that fast when you see it like this. It's tightening up there at the end because the other winch cable is still tied to the sling. Well, that's pretty cool. Let me know in the comments below if you think that I should make a third run from here back up to the boom so that it moves even slower and I have an even higher capacity with it. But with 10,000 pounds, I think that would be plenty for ever needing to move this boom. I wouldn't anticipate moving it very much when there's a vehicle attached to it. So I don't intend for the winch to actually work that hard. This is what it looks like with the winch connected to the boom. I even took a little bit of time to put my other pintle hitch on. Now I can use a bridle that goes between the two and have even more pulling power, even though I don't think that these would ever pull out of a beam this big. Now I never have to worry about it. 
I think that's going to be it for today. Obviously, I have a lot of things planned for this truck. And once I do get those carburetor and exhaust upgrades done, I do want to redyno it so that we can see if it actually made any difference at all. So if you want to see more videos like this, comment below and click subscribe.